G'day, my name's Simon Byrne. I'm a vMix online producer. I run a couple of businesses. Uh, one's called Think Project Design. That's my event production management business. And Streamout. And Streamout is my business for, for all of my online work. I've been streaming events since uh, 2014, so I've been doing a long time, certainly much longer than uh, COVID and uh, when everyone else joined me. So this is my virtual control room uh, in Canberra. And it's a system that's permanently set up and it's based around vMix. So I thought I'd give you a little look around. So to start off with, the four bottom monitors are my vMix machine. So this vMix machine is down here in this rack here and that's a 12 core 24 thread AMD machine with 64 gig of RAM, VFRAFS processor and at the moment it's got an RTX 2080 Super, although I'll probably upgrade that uh, shortly and it's also got a Blackmagic card with four HDMI inputs as well as another Blackmagic Decklink uh, 8K Pro, which is um, four SDIs in or out. Uh, the smart video hub above it is for routing, obviously. So I use that to route my various inputs and outputs around the room. And uh, that'll become apparent when I show you over the rest of it. If I go back to the main sort of desk, this here is one of my Intel NUC machines and I've also got another Intel NUC machine there and they do different roles depending on what's expected of them for the particular job so in this instance that one's running PowerPoint just with a test presentation and uh, this one here is normally run uh, for my Zoom rooms so I've got a Zoom room which gives me the ability to pull clean NDI feeds of remote contributors and uh, this is the controller for that as well. So those machines are down here. So just a couple of Intel uh, NUCs, I think they're i7s. Uh, 16 gig of RAM, uh, two terabyte drives. Pretty simple machines, nothing, nothing too special about them. But uh, in both cases they've also got a Yuan SDI uh, input on them. So I can route, using the Smart Video Hub, I can route uh, SDI to these machines or um, use NDI, of course, as well. So I've got a couple of network switches. So the left switch here, so excuse these labels here. These, you'll, you'll see black tape right throughout this video. It's generally me just hiding information that uh, I don't want on the internet. But this is the main switch here. So this, this switch does the uh, lion's share of the switching uh, in this control room. And this switch here is for Dante. So all of the audio in this space is Dante. So uh, this Yamaha TF3 board has a Dante card fitted to it. And uh, the top uh, Intel NUX use Dante virtual sound cards but the main machine uses a uh, RME Digiface Dante Dante to USB interface. I found that I couldn't get Dante virtual sound card running as reliably as I wanted it to with vMix. No matter what I did, Dante virtual sound card uh, extended the render times in vMix. So there was some sort of networking issue. I spent several days trying to solve it and I never managed to solve it conclusively. So this uh, Digiface Dante ended up being the solution. And um, I'm glad I went that way. It's a fantastic piece of kit. And so my audio infrastructure in this room's rock solid. So the TF3 just simply does routing and monitoring uh, in this space. Uh, the audio is um, Genelec uh, 8030s, 
So I've got a pair of Genelec 8030s for the main audio and then uh, I use HMD 25s for my comms and communications plus I've got some uh, the Audio Technica BPH S1s as well. This little laptop here is for Unity only. Uh, once again, that's uh, on Dante. Anything, I think I said, any, any purple network cable in this room means it's Dante. So uh, uh, there's two network connections to this machine, one for uh, the internet and one for Dante. And in this case, for comms, I've routed the audio to a dedicated speaker. So this dedicated Fostex monitor here is purely for comms. I found when I routed the comms through the main speakers or the headphones, it was just a little bit confusing. You didn't quite know where the, uh, where, uh, the audio source one was when somebody remotely was talking to you. So by having it come out on, a, on an external speaker, uh, just made things much, much clearer for me. Uh, the internet into the building comes in via uh, fibre. So I've got the top of the line enterprise grade NBN fibre. Uh, in Australia, we have something called the National Broadband Network, which is the NBM, which is a government owned company, which wholesales internet access to the internet service providers. And I've got the top of the line, I think they call it high COS, high cost, uh, enterprise grade service. It's 500, 500 both ways. Um, it's got a contention ratio of one to one, so I'm the only person on it. So I don't share my internet connection with anybody else in the suburb. It's all very much uh, my connection. And as a backup, I've got uh, one of these Netgear, I think is it M5 Nighthawk routers. Um, and I've got a pointing antenna on the roof, which is pointing to the nearest cellular tower. So that's my backup. I've never had to use it. Uh, the uh, fibre has been fantastic, but uh, it's there if it needs to. Then for backup power, I've got this UPS here. Um, that'll give me oh, about 50 minutes on those batteries, should I lose power. But I've also got a Tesla power wall. Uh, installed, which is purely, well not purely, but mainly for backup power. And I actually did have an event once where the power failed in the morning and the power was out for, I think about four hours that day. But because I had the Tesla power wall with 13.8 uh, kilowatt hours available to me, um, I had no problem. I just cruised through it. Power was not an issue. So that uh, turned out to be a great investment. Uh, I rarely record in, on vMix itself. I nearly always run external record machines. So I've got a little HyperDeck here um, and I, I just generally record in ProRes LT and then uh, run off a copy for the clients. Most of the time the clients only ever want uh, uh, an MP4 anyway. So uh, that's the, uh, an easy solution to do that. Um, and if I need more recorders, I just bring a few more in from the garage. I've got a couple of um, video assists which uh, can do extra recording for me as well. Uh, in terms of controllers, um, it's all brought together by Central Control. Jota Max's fantastic uh, controller, uh, what would you call it, conglomeration software. It gives us the ability to pull all of these devices together and control multiple other devices. So I've got my main uh, control panel here. Um, obviously the majority of my switching is done on this. Uh, keyboard underneath. Uh, once I'm in a show, I really need to use the keyboard. So uh, uh, that just goes underneath and out of the way. So this is my main set of controls for uh, the broadcast control itself. Uh, this stream deck here is for comms. Uh, so I can talk to various audio buses. So uh, bus B tends to be my main bus when I have remote callers. Bus D is my uh, green room. If I have a venue where they're running a PA system, I'm normally running on that bus. And then on a lot of the jobs I do, I uh, uh, also have captions or Auslan. So I put them on a separate audio bus as well. 
And then I've got a push to talk uh, button here for the Unity comms as well. And once again, the uh, uh, Joe's central control gives me the ability to push to talk on and off with that. And because it's all Dante, I can route anything to anywhere really quickly, really quite easily. And um, uh, that works really, really well. Uh, this box here is just a keyboard uh, mouse switcher. Gives me the ability to select my four machines uh, for both keyboard and mouse quickly. And then these stream decks here are largely for controlling my remote uh, contributors. So uh, this is just a bank of, uh, well in this case we've got uh, eight vMix calls in there. But I can use, uh, by using dynamic inputs, I can slot these callers into my various looks. So if I have, uh, so if I have uh, this, oh, that light's a bit blurry, but um, so, so there's a two-way look there. So if I wanted to put a caller into the left-hand box, I could just do it here. And similarly, if I wanted to put a different caller into a right-hand box, I could do it there with, uh, with those uh, dynamic inputs and scripting. Um, and then down here is just a timer controls. So you can see those buttons there. So uh, I have a speaker's timer that I can send back to our remote contributors. So if they want uh, 30 minutes, I can just do 30 minutes. Select 30 minutes and then uh, hit start. And that will obviously count down. And then this is just audio management for our remote callers. So if I need to talk to a caller, I can push a button and that moves them off bus B onto bus D. It solos their uh, source into my headphones and, and it uh, gives me the ability to talk to, to our remote contributors. So if I need to punch in to talk to somebody quite quickly, I just push a button and, um, and there it works all, all well. And then um, this is just another uh, laptop which I use for any purpose, uh, it doesn't matter what it needs to be. Um, I've found that I rarely will run any other programs in the background whilst I'm doing a vMix production, uh, particularly Chrome. Chrome, depending on the website or what you're doing, has uh, detrimental effects on um, vMix. So I've noticed it a few times, so I will tend to run, if I need to run Chrome or need to run monitor something, I'll run it on a completely separate machine and that's normally just this machine here. And at the moment, it, it's got my uh, Google Sheets for my lower thirds, for my titles. And that's how I do my titles for all my events because I just give my clients the link to this uh, sheet. They can fill it out for themselves. And then that means the titles are available to me automatically. I don't need to make any changes or do any typing myself. And then if I say, let's select, uh, let's select John. So I've selected John and then I need to bring up John's lower third. It's just a simple case of me pressing that button and it up, up it'll come. And uh, I've automated that as well. That just stays up there for nine seconds and then disappears. And then if I need, uh, let's say Joe, Joe's now loaded in there, same deal, I just uh, click on Joe. Um, and in terms of audio buses, this is a classic audio bus setup for me, the master output of course. Then I've got something called block, and all of my live microphones are routed to block, and you'll notice that's muted at the moment. So that gives me the ability to confidently be able to talk to our presenters prior to the event and them to be able to talk with each other without it going to the broadcast. And then I've got scripting set up so that um, when we go live uh, with uh, the event, that bus automatically comes up and then the background music fades and a few other things happen in the background and um, it's all automatic. Um, that should probably about do it. My name's uh, Simon Byrne. I'm available to assist with any of your online productions. Um, and uh, if I can assist you, please reach out. Thanks for your time.